Hey guys, so my name is Carissa Cece. How y'all doing? Okay, so I've noticed that in the school system and just in society, period, um, there is a lack of sex ed education for kids. So I thought I'd jump on here to share what I know about working with kids and how to talk to them about sex in an age-appropriate way. Um, to start off, I'm a mental health therapist and I work with kids who've been sexually abused. So first and foremost, when I'm working with these kids, they are very confused about what has happened to them. You know, um, they're not given the vocabulary needed to express what has happened to them. So first and foremost, I make sure that they know their body parts, the doctor names for their body parts. This is key because you know, if something ever happens or anything or every kid needs to know the doctor parts because I have, you know, heard a lot of names, different names for the body parts, not the doctor names for the body parts. And this is how I just won't get into it, but names are very important. So, and I know that the doctor parts are gross and shameful and stigmatizing but honestly it doesn't have to be if we don't if we normalize saying those body parts like this is my arm if we normalize saying that our private parts the body parts as normal as this is my arm then the kid is not going to feel any shame or guilt so anyways um how i usually do it um i would say things like okay so do you know what your private parts are? And if they say yes or no, then depending on what they say, I would say, okay, well, have you ever worn a bathing suit? And they would be like, yes, obviously. Okay, well, you know, when you wear a bathing suit, it is covering up a certain part of your body, right? And they're like, right. And I would say, this is called your private parts. And these parts are very, very special. So, you know that there are boys and there are girls, right? And they're like, yeah, well, girls have different body parts than boys. Do you want to learn about these body parts? And then they usually say, yeah, or something like that. And I said, okay. So for girls, you know, we have um, three body parts. So the first body part is we have, you know, when a girl grows up, she is going to get what's called breasts. And do you know what these are for? And they're going to be like, no. <laughs> and they'll be like, okay, well, you know how a baby drinks from a bottle, right? Yeah? Okay. Well, when, you know, say if it's a little girl I'm talking to, well, when you get older, then, and if you decide to have a baby, then your breasts are going to get full of milk. And it's going to be like a big bottle. And then you're going to be able to, you're not even going to need to warm up the bottle. You know, it's, you can feed your baby just like this right here. And some of them, that's so cool. I'd be like, yeah, right. We're like superheroes. <laughs> and then I said, and, or I would say something like, and then in the, you know, we have another body part too. Okay. Well, what's that? That what's that body part? This body part that we have down here is called a vagina, and we usually pee from this, and um, and you know we poop from our butt. And you know when you say poop, a kid is gonna laugh, and I'm gonna laugh. So this is gonna be funny, you know, because it's poop. Okay. So um, after we get done, then we can then usually we, and we also talk about the boys too and the boys they have a different body they have different body parts but they have one we have one body part in common well what kind of parts do they have well when a boy grows up um a boy doesn't get boobs so a boy doesn't get boobs they don't get their boobs full of milk so they can't feed the baby you know so when a boy grows up you know he has um on his lower half side he has what's called a penis and he pees from that and when, um, when you all grow up, you know, not right now, but when you all grow up, one day you're going to learn how babies are formed. 
you know, and you're gonna learn how to have a baby, but right now you're just a little kid. So your private parts need to be kept private, you know, only it's just like, when you take a bath, do you take a bath by yourself or do you take a bath with another person? I take a bath by myself, okay. So would you say that you wash your own arm and you wash your own hands and you wash your own hair? Yeah, okay. Do you wash your own butt? <laughs> they might start laughing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it's important that we, you know, wash everything. So we wash our butt, we wash our arms, we wash our breasts, we wash, we wash our vagina, but just with water. Don't wash it with too much soap, you know? And it's very important that we keep our bathing suit areas private. So these are our special areas that only we are allowed to see until we grow up and then things start changing. You know, we start feeling differently because we're a grown up now and that is very different. And then if they start asking too much questions, okay, mm I um, I change the subject a little bit because <laughs> I'm like, I'm not trying to have the full sex talk, you know what I'm saying? But if but if it's needed, I will. I have had the sex talk, you know, I have. Uncomfortable, especially when it's not your kids. <laughs> okay, but it, when it's needed, it's needed. So, um. And then I would say something like to differentiate between good touch and bad touch. I would like, I would say, can you slap me on my arm right here? Then it goes, what? Just slap me. Boom, like that. And then I said, ouch. I said, would you say that is a good touch or a bad touch? Ouch. And they'd be like, well, that's bad. Okay. And say if I asked you know, someone to give me a hug. You know, you, say if I asked George to give me a hug, do hugs make you feel good? And they're like, well, yeah. I said, would you say that a hug is a good touch or a bad touch? And they'd be like, it's good. Okay, we'll see there are good touches and bad touches. Good touches make us feel good. Bad touches make us feel really bad. And have you ever had what's called a confusing touch? And they be like, what is that? Well, it's a touch. It's someone touching us and we don't know whether it's good or bad. So we're kind of stuck because we're confused and we don't know what's really going on. You know, a confusing touch may be something might feel good, but then you might feel really, really bad after it, you know? And, they, and if they did have a confusing touch, then you may be like, oh yeah, that happened when so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and then if they give you a little information, you could just dig into that. Um, um, you can do that. Or let's see, I lost my train of thought. Confusing touches. Okay. Well, so depending on what they say to me, if they say, yeah, they've had a confusing touch, and if they give me an example, I'll be like, okay, did it make you feel good or bad? I don't know. Okay, well, you know how to tell a good touch from a bad touch? How? Well, you, sometimes you gotta ask yourself questions, like, did this make me feel good? You know, is this a person I can trust, you know? And if a person is telling you, okay, no. Is this a person I can trust? Yes or no? Okay, well, do you know the difference between a surprise and a secret? And they're like, uh, a secret is when someone tells you something and you're not supposed to tell anybody. Right. And what is a surprise? Well, a surprise is like a surprise birthday party. Right. So sometimes people can tell you secrets to keep and it's really not a secret that you're supposed to keep. So if someone is telling you a secret or telling you to keep a secret and if you're feeling really confused and you don't know what to do and it's making you feel really yucky inside and bad, then you need to tell an adult about that secret because really, you know, an adult shouldn't be telling a kid 
to keep a secret, like if it makes them feel bad. They're like, huh, okay. Have you ever had a seek? Have you ever had somebody tell you something that you were just kind? It made you feel bad, and you were told not to tell anybody because if you told anybody, then someone might get mad, or you know, um, you might be taken away, or something bad might happen. And sometimes they might say no, and if they say no, great. It's okay, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would just focus on really normalizing saying, you know, the doctor names for the body parts to the kids. And you know, um, I say things like, you know, if it's okay to say no, you know, everybody has boundaries. And this is one of my favorite ones, okay, that I, that I tell kids. And sometimes kids, kids don't have like any sense of boundaries either, but you gotta love them. So I said, okay, I'm gonna teach you about boundaries. What's a boundary? Okay, well, you know, you know what personal space is? And they're like, no, because <laughs> they don't. Okay. Well, I want you to stick your arms as far as you can. And they stick them out. And I said, and I want you to move it all around you. Ouch. Oh, I'm so sorry. I want you to move it all around you right here. You see all this space that your arms are in right now? And they're like, yeah. And I said, this is your personal space. So this right here is your bubble, right? This is a boundary. So if anybody comes in, your bubble without you wanting them to, then they are crossing your boundaries, which means they're going into your bubble when you don't want them to. So tell me, if say if I go into your bubble right now, how would you tell me to get out of your bubble? Get out of my bubble. Yes, you can say that, <laughs> you know, or, you're in my personal space. I need space. You can say that too. Have you ever had a time where someone comes into your bubble and you just don't want them in your bubble? Yeah, sometimes my brother comes up in my bubble and he tries to wrestle with me and I just slap him across the head. Okay, well... <laughs> um. We'll work on that later. You know, we use, you know, our words, not our fists, but you know, it's okay. Um, okay, so what can you do to tell him to get out of your bubble? Or if you don't want him in, or, in your bubble, what are some ways, some things you can say to tell him to get out of your bubble? Or that you don't want him in your bubble? I can say, leave me alone. You're right, you can say, leave me alone. What else can you say? I can say, no! Get out of my bubble. Yes, you can say no. And this doesn't only have to happen with your brother. This can happen with anyone. So if anyone comes in your personal space and you don't feel comfortable, you feel kind of yucky or weird or just annoyed, then you can just say, I need my personal space. You know, you're in my bubble right now. You're too close, too close. Can you back up a little bit? And if they don't back up, then you need to go and tell a trusted adult, like your mom or your dad or anybody like that, or your teacher. Say, this person is in my bubble and I told them to get out and they would not. You know. Um, so I like to do the whole personal space because it kind of like gives them a visual. And you know, sometimes kids will try you and they'll try to get up all in your personal space. Like, oh, Cece, oh, Cece, I'm in your bubble. I'm in your bubble. <laughs> so that's like perfect for me to practice. Then to get out of my bubble, right? So, but yeah, we need to start talking to our kids about sex. We need to. We don't have to give them the full details about sex. You know, we can wait until they get older and things like that, but we need to make it clear to them what the doctor parts are 
and we need to make it specifically clear for them that if anybody touches their private parts that they need to tell a trusted adult and that also it is not their fault. So an example of this conversation would be like, so, you know, if anybody comes into your personal space and they try to touch your bathing suit areas, and remember, those are your special private parts, so they are yours. Nobody is supposed to touch them. So if they if they touch your bathing suit areas, then, you know, what is the first thing that you can do? Well, I can tell them no. Exactly. You tell them no, you go, which means you run away, and you tell a trusted adult. And remember one thing too, if this does happen, you might have a lot of feelings of yuckiness inside of you. And, but you have to remember too, that you did not do anything for this to happen to you. And this was not your fault. This was not your fault, okay? The adult knows better or the older kid knows better and they broke the rules they broke your boundaries too so it is not your fault so if this ever does happen to you then you need to tell them no scream no you need to go and you need to no go or run and you need to tell a trusted adult and remember that it is not your fault your private parts are very special and they're your private parts. They are nobody else's and nobody can touch them at all. You know, nobody can touch them at all except for you. Because why? Because I'm the boss. You're right. You are the boss of your body. Just like I am the boss of my body, George is the boss of his body. And sometimes he don't even want me hugging him. Okay? <laughs> well, Cece, what if, what if, um, someone hugs me and I don't want them to hug me or what if I always go over to my grandma's house and my cousin always comes up and hugs me and I just don't want them to well what are some things you can say to let them know that you don't want to be hugged what do we just go over well I can tell them you're in my personal space right now and I don't want I don't want to hug you right now you can say that you can definitely say that you know, and you don't have to feel bad because if you don't have to feel bad for not wanting to hug them back. Because why? Because this is my body. This is my body. And no one else is. And I'm the boss. Exactly. You are the boss of your own body. And you never, ever, ever forget it. Got it good. Boom. Like that. I kind of talk in a sing-song voice a little bit because with kids, like, not really with teenagers, though, because, I mean, you know, I don't want a teenager thinking that I'm patronizing them. Okay, you no. Know, boy, little kids, you kind of have to. Like, so they'll stay engaged for one, and they won't think that this material that we're given to them, they won't think it's, like, super threatening or that they're doing something wrong. Because no, they're, they haven't done anything wrong. You know, they probably feel, if they've ever been, you know, molested or abused, they feel like they've done something wrong because that's what kids do. They internalize their abuse. They internalize that trauma and they make it to where it's their fault. And now I'm trying to undo that. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to undo that. Ah, okay, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I really wasn't planning to do like a video like this. <laughs> um, honestly, I was watching a child bride story and it really just made me super mad. So that's why I got on here and just decided to talk about sex education for kids because we need to keep our kids educated about this stuff. Okay. You know, and we need to let them know that they can come to us, even if they are being coached or groomed or told that they cannot come to us we need to reassure them that they can and that it is not their fault if something happens to them that they didn't do anything wrong okay so yeah um i hope y'all have a good night and yeah i will
will see you in my next video. If you like this video, let me know. If you want me to do more things or if you want me to... Sorry, I'm about to yawn. Um, if you want me to talk about other things, other interventions that I've done that worked, just let me know. And I'll do my best to explain it. Or what's worked for me, for these kids. Okay, have a good day. Goodbye.